Hello and welcome to the Beauty Know It All. I'm back where I belong, in my office talking about beauty products. And today is a much requested vlog. We've had a couple of quite warm early May weekends in the UK and a lot of people have been saying it's time to break out the SPF, but what SPF should I use on my face? So I thought I'd look at facial SPFs and what to look for in a facial SPF. And I'm going to look at the sort of products that I would use and I love which are very lightweight mineral SPFs in a sort of serum formulation. And I'm also going to look at products for drier skins as well, because obviously not everybody has the same skin type and some people would be looking for a more hydrating, moisturizing cream. So uh, I'm sure you know this, we should all be wearing SPFs most days. However, it's hard when they are, for the most part, pretty heavy, pretty oily, pretty occlusive, cause breakouts. I hardly ever get spots. I can pretty much guarantee if I go on holiday and wear a really normal, traditional beach SPF that I will break out all through my chin and I'll get clogged pores. And that's because traditionally SPFs work in a very specific way. There are two types of SPFs, I'm sure you know this. They're traditionally called chemical and physical. I mean, obviously everything in the world is a chemical. But by chemical, it means they work in a chemical way in the sense that they are put on your skin about 15 minutes before you go out. They're the ones with the really oxymethyl long names. Um, and what they do is they absorb into the top dead layers of skin. And when the sun hits them, they chemically sort of bounce and then reform or break. And what they end up doing is they end up absorbing the energy from the sun and turning it into heat in the skin. Uh, and these are the products that are actually designed to get in the surface layers of the skin. So these are the ones that they're pretty much broad spectrum. Most of them are really good quality nowadays and they protect against UVA and UVB. Uh, they can produce heat on the skin slightly, so they don't necessarily protect so well against infrared light. But they're the ones that I think cause the problems in skin and they're the ones most commonly found in most facial SPFs and also in makeup. However, if you don't suffer from breakouts, good for you, they're a great place to start. And I've got some here that I really like from brands I really trust. Now, physical SPFs are also chemicals, actually. It's just that they're minerals. They're titanium and zinc dioxide. And there's a sort of misconception that they are thick and white and pasty, and they're not nowadays. They're micronized. They are the SPFs that are found in mineral makeup, in a lot of mineral powders, and a lot of liquid mineral makeups as well. And they work in a fundamentally different way. And this is why I prefer them, is they are literally ground down rock. And what that rock does is um, it sits on the surface of the skin and it acts like a mirror. They're large particles. In fact, they tend to give quite a nice, soft, focus, light reflective look to the skin. Back in the olden days, there were sort of thick white stripes, but not anymore. And what happens is when the sun hits them, it reflects back, it bounces back in its entirety. And because they're large, they sit over the pores of the surface of the skin. So they essentially form a barrier between you and the outside world. And, you know, they pioneered really great SPFs. I haven't actually included theirs here today because it's been around for so long, but City Block, hello. First great everyday use SPF, SPF 15, SPF 20, SPF 30, I think they ever do now. And they were the first ones to do um, tinted ones. And actually, what they did is they got their inspiration from what I call clinical skincare, and I'm going to start with these. So here are my favourite three physical SPFs. Right, you'll not be surprised to hear that SkinCeuticals is one of my favourite favourites. I these are these are expensive these products, but I do love them. I love anything that comes in a small bottle and sounds like that. What that means is it's got a little bauble in the bottom that's designed to shake up um, and mix your SPF because SPF can have a tendency, especially mineral SPF can have a tendency to settle to the bottom. This is their Skin Usuals Mineral Radiance UV Defense SPF 50 Universal Tint. And I love it. It's broad spectrum, UVA, UVB. It comes in untinted, it comes in an SPF 30 as well. And that's what it looks like when you open it, yeah? And I'm going to show you what it looks like on the back of my hand, right? It comes out literally like, in fact, you'll be familiar with this now, like a water tint foundation, like one of those MAC Kiko water tint foundations. And it disappears. They call that a universal tint. 
It's got a silicon feel to it. That's another thing that you get with these. Listen to that ball. It's a silicon base, but it's a volatile silicon, so it tends to disappear. You are left with a slight skin squeak, but that would sit really beautifully under foundation, really beautifully under makeup. And actually for me, when I'm abroad, I wear that under a mineral SPF powder. So you get a double whammy. That sits on the surface of the skin. And then the mineral powder that I use, which is Jane Erdell, SPF 20 will then sit on the top. Literally disappears to nothing. It's almost like wearing one of those mineral tint veil foundations, uh, the water tints. You'll not be surprised. I love this brand as well. Neo Strata do a similar one. This is the Neo Strata Sheer Physical Protection, SPF 50 again. I love Neo Strata. I was speaking at one of their conferences the other day and I was so impressed by their R&D. They actually do um, clinical trials on their uh, products to prove they work. That actually has got a little ball in it. Again, you shake it up, similar top. I'm gonna run out of hands here, aren't I? But let's put it on a hairy arm. Ooh, there you go. Water again, just drop that all over my jeans. Oh joy. Also, what is it about these tops? Am I the only one that has to continually do this? I've got narrow shoulders as well. There you go. Super lightweight. Disappears in seconds. Even wipes off your jeans. Unscented mineral SPF. Two or three drops go a really long way. These are the products that if you go to a clinic and you have a treatment, uh, a peel, some laser work, these are the products that are put on after you. That's how inert they are. That's how you know they're not ending up in your pores. And finally, a new one, the SPF Daily Shield Tinted SPF 50. Now, this is my problem with this. I do love this. It's, um, it's zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Again, similar, um, they're all SPF 50. So the idea about using an SPF 50 rather than a 20 or a 30 is that with something this light, you might not apply it as thickly or as evenly as you would um, a normal moisturiser. Uh, so if you go slightly higher with the SPF, you're kind of guaranteed, even if you apply it not as thickly as you should, to get a sort of SPF 15, SPF 20, in my opinion. Now, this is my problem with this. I do love Epiance. I've spoken about this range lots of times. This is a really dark tint. It's, it's too dark for me. It's a thicker formulation it's not a water tint it's more like a traditional foundation it i'm going to put it on the back of my arm here that's too dark for me you call it a universal tint my body is quite brown because i'm much naughtier about putting my spf on my body than i am on my face and chest and it's richer that would suit a darker skin somebody that's got a face that color rather than this color and also a drier skin. It's more moisturizing, that. Uh, but they basically are my three gold standard, zinc dioxide, titanium dioxide, mineral inert sunscreens, no breakouts. I do love them. Right, I'm going to put those down there. I've got so many. Can we do a really quick shout out to what I think is a unique product? Now, I remember that there was a company before that came over to the UK, it was an American brand, and they did a wash off SPF. Sounds weird, right? But as far as I know, Dr. Russo is the only one who's currently doing it. And the Dr. Russo SPF 30 Sun Protective Daily Cleanser is kind of clever. It's a cream cleanser that they say foams. I don't really think it does, but it turns into sort of a milky, gentle foam on the skin. You basically wash it on, I would actually cleanse my skin properly first with a with a decent rinse off cleanser and then you put this on once it foams up and then you rinse it away and it leaves an SPF 30 behind and what it does is you can feel it on your skin slightly but it's almost like a beautiful hydrating cleanser I texted a friend of mine earlier to say I wonder if she'd ever tested it because she writes for a lot of newspapers and she tests things and it's got an SPF on it right it has to be, it sells in America. It has to be proven to give that SPF. Therefore, you can trust it. But somehow part of me still thinks, does it work? If you don't like anything sticky on yourself and you want something to wear in the city every day under makeup, it's highly recommended. 
Should we go on to products I found that I like, but that I think work better for drier skins? I'm going to start with the Olay 7 um, in 1 Total Effects SPF 20. It's that one. Now, I think Olay do the best high street SPFs, without a doubt. They do a three point serum, which is an SPF 30, which is the best lightweight high street SPF for a reasonable price that I think you can get. It's a gorgeous lightweight serum. They also do the featherweight SPF 15. Ironically, that seems to me slightly heavier than the three point serum. Um, this is their new one, and it's actually better suited for dry skins. It's too heavy for me but then I've already talked about two products I already love from the range. This is a cream, um, and it would really, you can tell there straight away, it doesn't go into my skin easily, you can tell that it would really suit a drier skin, somebody that prefers a bit more moisture on their skin, that could replace your daily moisturiser, um, and it would work really well under cream foundations and cream makeup. It, to me, it's just slightly too hydrating, but if you've got dry skin, great budget buy. Another one I really like, if money's no, not an object, the Dr. Spag Sun City Protection uh, SPF 30. There it is on the back of my hand. Super hydrating, super rich. Actually does leave a really hydrating base for foundations and would be great on dry skin, really great on dry skin. Um, to me, I'm, I'm a freak. I just don't particularly like layering on heavy moisturizers to my skin especially not in the summer, I'll tend to shine. I don't have oily skin, I think I have well-balanced skin, I just don't like layering on quite heavy creams, but if you do, that's the one for you. And then the other one is, um, and I didn't expect this to be as heavy as it is. I'm a real fan of the Origins Dr. Vile, Vile range, mainly because um, the serum, the Mega Mushroom Serum, really helped calm my sister's skin when she had rosacea. So I've always been very open to this range. Anyway, this is their Mega Defense SPF 45. And because it's in a little one, and it sounds a little bit like my famous, gorgeous, clinical, uh, physical SPFs, I don't know why. I thought it'd be super light, and it's absolutely not. It's really, really, really moisturizing. And I've just realized I need to double check. Is it a, is it a physical SPF or a, a chemical SPF? It's titanium dioxide, actually. So it, it belongs with those physical um, brands. And I'm not surprised that Dr. Viles put in titanium dioxide. I would imagine he's not very pro chemical sunscreens because he's very organic and very natural. Anyway, this one comes out like this. So I thought I was going to pour this out and get like a runny little, and it, it came out as a liquid, but this is seriously hydrating. This feels more like a traditional beach SPF. Um, titanium dioxide disappears on the skin, super hydrating. Two other ones I really love from brands I know and really trust. La Roche-Posay F um, and Thelios XL Ultralight SPF 50 Plus and the La Roche-Posay Effaclar Duo SPF 30. Um, this one is specifically targeted for age spots, but I mean, all SPFs should be targeted at age spots. This is, uh, I think, super rich. Um, it's, I mean, actually it's sort of medium in consistency. Now, you know that La Roche-Posay and SkinCeuticals, although obviously SkinCeuticals don't use uh, the chemical SPF in their um, products that I've shown you, but you know that they're all owned by... Um, L'Oreal. So they have a really great chemical sunscreen called Mexeril, which is really clever because it has the ability, as I said earlier on, when it absorbs the light and it turns it to heat, what happens is the molecule tends to change shape and then it becomes not so effective. Or well, this one doesn't, this one bounces back, which means they last for longer on the skin. That's a really lovely, lightweight, well, no, medium weight, medium weight chemical SPF that I really like. But actually, this is such a clever little one. That's the sound I want with my SPF. That's that little ball in the bottom mixing them up. And again, let's have a look. Super lightweight, almost milky. This would be a great one for the kids. If I was going to go for a chemical SPF, that would be my choice. I wrote about it in Hello this week. Super lightweight, feels like a gorgeous, super expensive milky serum. Um, 
and it's a tiny little bottle but it would see you through it's a 50 ml bottle so you could pack it in your bag when you go on holiday uh, you only need a few drops a little goes a long way and that's probably going to win my award for best SPF 50 everyday chemical sunscreen so I would go where's my lovely SkinCeuticals Neostrata so I would go SkinCeuticals Neostrata for me personally are my favourite physical sunscreens that's my favourite high SPF chemical sunscreen but actually my favourite budget SPF is the Olay 3.0 serum um, if you want a chemical SPF and you don't want to spend too much money I really love it all of them sit well under makeup most innovative product definitely the Dr Russo wash off SPF 30 and actually one final shout out um, I don't have well, in fact two shout outs I don't have with me at the moment the Elemis Pro Collagen SPF 30 because somebody stole it off my desk um, if you love Pro Collagen which is a super rich moisturizer the new SPF 30 version is brilliant for dry skins so many of my friends really love it it doesn't pill under makeup at all and it's in a tub so it's super moisturizing I'll try and find an image and drop it in here and the other one if you really like a rich beautiful moisturizer with an SPF in every day then the DCL one which is the profoundly effective A cream SPF 30 is really lovely as well the um, Elemis Pro Collagen is richer for dry skins this is more actually do you know what even I would use this it's a cream but it's it's, oh, it's a, I mean DCL they do have lovely formulations ironically even though it looks like that it's more like a, a gel cream and it's super super lightweight and cooling and goes in beautifully almost turns into a serum on the skin so if you want a tub of it and an SPF 30 I recommend that but they're my two tub products I am covered in SPF and guess what it's about to pour down ironically the minute I do an SPF vlog it's gonna rain all weekend in London what do you bet I tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to list all the products below and I'm going to break them down into physical sunscreens chemical sunscreens and the skin type therefore so best for oily skins best for dry skins best for normal skins um, somebody said to me earlier on on Instagram because I was taking pictures of these and saying I was going to vlog about this somebody said to me are they okay to use every day and are they okay to use on the beach now personally I think if it's got an SPF 30 on it or an SPF 50 on it, it doesn't make any difference whether you're using them every day under your makeup or on the beach on their own or maybe if you're a little bit um, vain under a little bit of makeup on the beach or sightseeing on holiday an SPF is an SPF is an SPF it says the SPF on the outside trust me they are highly regulated it has to have that SPF in that product so it doesn't matter if it's a serum or an oil or a gel or a cream it has to have that SPF in it so there really should be no difference between the SPF you put on your face on the beach and the SPF you wear every day in the city or on holiday sightseeing and the reason I like these is because they are formulated specifically for the face and you might think sometimes oh, so much money why should I bother but if you're carrying them on all year and if you can literally use two or three drops or a tiny bit under your makeup then I think they're worth spending the extra money on and also they go really nicely down here onto your chest so you don't feel too sticky because the products you wear on the beach are formulated for bodies they're really really occlusive and moisturizing you don't really want to put them on your face put them on your face you'll end up with a spotty chin right thank you for subscribing any questions below all the details will be below I promise there's a little arrow click on it and all the information will come up and all the URLs